Welcome to Electron Online, and in this video we're getting closer and closer and closer to the real representation of a wave equation. A wave moves to the right with velocity v, it has an amplitude a, and of course it has a wavelength, lambda. And in the previous video we looked at the phase shift. We said, okay, we have the black line here representing a, a wave that's stationary, so Time is equal to zero, kept to zero, so it's only a function of x, and so that was going to be a times the cosine of kx. But then, if we had a phase shift to the right, whatever the phase shift was, then we can adjust that equation by introducing the phase shift here in this quantity right here that we're taking the cosine of. And we showed in the last video that, if, for example, if this was equal to lambda over 2, um, that would be um, not lambda over 2, but I should say... Uh, uh, pi over 2, quarter of a, of a wave, then everything shifted over by 90 degrees and we saw that that worked just fine. But now notice that we're going to replace this by something that depends on t. Remember that a, an angle theta is equal to omega times time because we can say that theta is equal to, instead of omega, we write d theta dt times time. And of course, if these cancel out, you can see that the shift is equal to uh, the angle difference. That means that we can replace this by omega times t. So this simply re represents a certain angle difference in our wave, and so we can rewrite this now as y, that now becomes a function of both x and t, is equal to a times the cosine of kx minus omega t. So now if we, for example, pick a spot, like here, right there, and we watch the wave go to the right with uh, velocity v, what that means is that we have continual shifts to the right that vary with time. As time goes on, the shift becomes bigger and bigger and bigger, and the wave will move further and further and further to the right. So let's see that how long would it take, for example, for the wave to do a complete one wavelength shift to the right. That would mean that this whole thing would shift one complete 2 pi to the right, right? That would be an angle shift of 2 pi, which represents a complete wave. So, what I'm going to do here now is show you an example to try and make some sense out of this equation. Does this equation make sense? So what I did was here, let's say we have a wavelength of 2 meters, a velocity of the wave is 20 meters per second, and then later on we're going to find what the displacement is y is equal to question mark when uh, x is equal to 0 and t is equal to, let's say, 2 seconds. And so in other words, what we're looking for is y when x is equal to uh, zero and t is equal to two seconds is equal to question marks then we'll actually find the value for that but so what we're going to do here is find the equation for a wave that's traveling to the right at 20 meters per second and has a wavelength of two meters so first of all since k is equal to two pi over lambda then we say well in this case we could say that k since lambda is going to be two meters is equal to two pi divided by two which is equal to pi. So that means the first part of the equation we get y as a function of x uh, and t and of course uh, that's going to be equal to the amplitude a, whatever the amplitude is. I didn't give an amplitude yet. Um, maybe we should do that. Amplitude let's say is equal to 0 0.1 meter. So a 10 centimeter amplitude in the wave. So this then becomes 0 0.1 meter multiplied times the cosine of. Now k we determined if lambda is 2 meters, k is equal to pi, so we have pi times x minus omega times t. So now I need to find out what my uh, omega is. So omega is equal to 2 pi times the frequency. And then from our wave equation we know that uh, velocity is equal to frequency times wavelength, which implies that frequency is equal to velocity divided by wavelength. And once we find the frequency, we plug that in here and we find our omega. So the velocity in this case was 20 meters per second. And the wavelength was 2 meters. So it would be equal to 10 per second, which is equal to 10 hertz. We can then plug that in here. And we can say that omega is equal to 2 pi times 10, which is equal to 20 pi. And that can go in here. So this is minus 20 pi times t. And that would be the equation representing our example right here. We've given the amplitude, 10 centimeters or 0.1 meters. 
k is the wave number and that's determined by the wavelength so we know that the wavelength is 2 meters so 2 pi divided by 2 is simply pi so we get pi times x minus 20 pi where does 20 pi come from well we know that omega is 2 pi f velocity is frequency times wavelength which means that frequency is velocity divided by wavelength velocity was given wavelength was given we have our frequency that means this wave is oscillating up and down at 10 times per second Omega is 2 pi times that number, so 20 pi, and that then goes in our equation right here, times time. So now we have an equation that describes a wave that's moving to the right at 20 meters per second with a wavelength of 2 meters and an amplitude of 0.1 meter. So plug in any x and any t, and we should be able to find that momentary displacement at that location at that moment in time. So to show how to do that, we given some examples here that we have when x is equal to zero, which is at the origin, and time is equal to two seconds, what is our displacement at that time? So let's plug that in into our equation and see what we get. So y, when x is equal to zero and t is equal to, we set two seconds, that's equal to 0 0.1 meters, which is our amplitude, times the cosine of pi times x. Now remember, x was equal to 0, so that means 0 minus 20 pi times t, and in this case t was 2 seconds, so we plug in 2 seconds. Alright, so now we need to find out what the cosine of 40 pi is equal to. Well, let's see, 40 pi, that's a, that's a multiple of 2 pi's, isn't it? That's 20 times 2 pi, and of course, for every cosine of 2 pi, we get 1. So the cosine of 40 pi would also have to be 1. So this is equal to 0 0.1 meters times the cosine of uh, 2 pi, which is equal to 0 0.1 meters times 1, or 0 0.1 meters. All right, so if you didn't understand the explanation, you can actually plug this number right in, right? So you have 2 times 20 pi gives you 40 pi. That means you have to go to radian mode. So second function uh, 5, I think, is radian mode. Now that's degrees. Second function 6 is radian mode. Okay, so we have 40 times pi. And then we take the cosine of that. So the cosine, it doesn't matter if it's positive or negative. Take the cosine of that. That gives you exactly 1. So 1 times 0.1 meters does indeed give you that result. So hopefully this explains the equation that describes a wave. It's going to be a function of x and it's going to be a function of time at the same time. We have the amplitude a and the cosine of the wave number times x and omega times t. So in this case, the wave number is determined by the length of the wave. So 2 pi divided by the wavelength gives you the wave number pi. So that describes the, the wave of wave number of uh, wavelength 2 meters. And then we need to find the omega, the frequency. The omega is the angular frequency, which is equal to 2 pi times the oscillatory frequency, which was given to be, uh, let's see here. Oh, we had to find out what it is. We were given the wavelength and the velocity. So the frequency is velocity divided by wavelength, which is 10 hertz. Plug that in here, times 2 pi gives us the angular frequency that which goes in here and then all I have to do is plug in an x and a time and you'll get the displacement at any position in the x direction and at any point in time. And that is the wave equation that describes a traveling wave or a transverse wave.